Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, let's see. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Yvonne Monroe. I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, about 25 years ago, I uh, founded a practice called MindPath, which now has many offices in uh, North Carolina. Um, we'd like to be of use to you during this pandemic. COVID-19 has brought hard times, especially for you, our elderly. We haven't seen a pandemic during our lifetimes, and you have had long, successful lives. You're accomplished people who have strongly contributed to society. We highly revere you and respect you. We want you to know that we are thinking about you. In some ways, your lives haven't changed since March, and in other ways, your lives are interrupted. You um, are probably apprehensive about becoming ill, very concerned for your family and friends, missing the visits of your loved ones, wishing you could have meals in the dining room. And if someone very close to you has died, you may be uh, feeling more sadness, yearning, and maybe loneliness. There are several evidence-based self-care and coping strategies. Staying connected to others is the most important. Many of you are receiving phone calls, emails, and doing Facebook, FaceTime, or Skype. Keeping up, um, walking or your exercises is crucial. Uh, we must be at our strongest right now. The other pillars of uh, well being are uh, sleep and healthy eating. Right? Um, want to um, limit our exposure to distressing media. You know, whatever that limit is for you, maybe 30 minutes a day, maybe the radio instead of the television, if the visuals are upsetting. You can learn and practice stress management techniques. Um, three of these are deep breathing or diaphragmatic breathing, um, progressive muscular relaxation, and visual guided imagery. And you've probably heard of all three of those. If you are feeling nervous, you know, perhaps with like tense muscles and uh, worrying even at nighttime, or if you are feeling depressed, um, maybe fatigued and um, communicating less and uh, not hungry, waking up more, you know, then um, professional help is indicated. Um, so what, what can we do to uh, help you? Well, we have um, all of our uh, many, many clinicians are, um, are using telepsychiatry, telemedicine. So without leaving your home, you can see and talk with a professional via telehealth. You can uh, do this with a smartphone, an iPad, or, or a laptop or a tablet. Um, one of your staff can help you get set up. Um, after an assessment, which usually takes about an hour, uh, the clinician will make some treatment recommendations for you. Um, these may be um, teaching you one of these you know, stress management techniques, relaxation techniques offering you a medication um, and or referring you to a therapist for talking. Um, this, this is uh, not a permanent situation, right? We will resume our usual lives. You are well loved. We would like to help. 
So I'm going to look at some uh, questions or topics that uh, some of you may have uh, chatted in. Um, so let's see. Um, let's see how to do that. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I don't see, okay, here's one here. And let's see what uh, Heather Daniel has to say. Okay, um, so um, uh, these are the participants here. So, so let's talk about what helps us feel good. All right, so what does help us feel good? Um, well, let's see, taking care of ourselves, right? Basic self-care. So that means things like sleeping enough, eating well. So let's talk about sleep. Um, when we're trying to, you know, bolster ourselves against an illness or stress, um, it's important to sleep about at least seven hours of sleep a night, unless you yourself have never needed that much. It's also good not to sleep more than nine hours, because if you sleep more than nine hours, that can become depressing to your to your body and brain. So, um, you know, it's good to you know not watch the news or anything that's too um, stimulating. You know, about an hour, two hours before bed. Um, and then, um, you know, just rest, relax, go to sleep. When you wake up, which you will, um, you know, it's also important to have lights out. You know, if you can remove um, those little uh, night lights that you might have, if you're having trouble falling back to sleep, unless you need them for safety so that you don't fall. Um, and don't turn on any lights because that um, reduces your melatonin immediately and then it's hard to go back to sleep. Um, if you're waking up too early, you know, and worrying, um, you know, that's kind of typical right now. But if it gets out of hand, you know, that's another reason to obtain, you know, professional help. Um, so eating. Um, you know, during this time, we want strength. We want our muscle mass to remain. You know, we may not be walking or getting out as much as we used to. And so it's really good to eat, you know, focus on protein, right? So if you eat this, you know, protein three or four times a day, that's about the size of the fleshy part of your hand. You've heard this before. You know, then that's, that's a good amount. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, so. The other thing about the eating is that um, carbohydrates induce inflammation. And right now we don't want we don't want inflammation in our bodies. You know, if we do get ill, if we do contract the COVID-19 virus, then you know, we want to be able to fight it off. And the vast, vast majority of you will fight it off if you are if you do become ill. So, you know, we want to help that by not already being in a state of inflammation. So if you're, you know, um, overweight, this is a good time to really focus on not eating as many carbohydrates. And, you know, let's limit our sweets, right, to one or two small pieces, you know, a day right now. Um, it's also good to remember that, you know, adequate protein is hard to get. You know, um, an egg white only has six grams of protein and a small person needs about 40 or 50 grams of protein. And a larger person, you know, needs 70 or 80 a day. So, you know, keep up your muscle mass. Um, other things that help with feeling good about ourselves is being validated, right? So if we have feelings, we want them to be validated, right? If we're feeling sad, we want someone to say, you know, for, sorry that you're feeling sad. Or if you're feeling angry about being cooped up and about this virus and it's taking, you know, months away from your lives, 
then, you know, it's good to be able to say that or write it down or, you know, email it to somebody that cares about you and listens to you. Um, you know, if there are people in your lives that don't listen and don't validate, you know, shift your energy to people that do those things, you know, for you, because that's really helpful to help you feel good about yourself. Now, nature is really important part of, you know, our existence. And uh, this is a beautiful time of year. Um, if you can get outside, I urge you to go out as often as possible. You know, walking around, just sitting in a chair, um, it, you know, all of that movement and activity, the soothing aspects of nature, looking at these new leaves, the flowers, flowering trees, all of that will help you, you know, reduce your stress level, sleep better at night, and have a better appetite. So what else? Okay, other things that help us feel good are um, having something to do, you know, um, being of use, right? Um, so you may have been volunteering, right? You may have been providing, uh, you know, support to uh, someone that lives there in the um, assisted living facility with you. And now you're not able to, um, you know, do those things. You know, it's, no volunteering is going on hardly at this point, and um, you can't be in close proximity to people that have been close to you. So, you know, you may need to become, um, uh, you know, interested in something new, right? Um, maybe you've had an interest, you know, a long time ago or several years ago, and this is a time to renew that interest. You know, you can order things online, I'm sure most of you do that, and they can be delivered to you. And so that would be um, no good. Um, in fact, you can Google or Safari, you can search for hobbies, right? And you can look at like uh, such a long list of possible hobbies and uh, you become interested in something. This helps, helps you, helps your day go faster and uh, is absorbing. That's really, really important. And then your usual hobbies too, you know, whether it's reading, you know, if you really love to read, but you found that you can't really see the print well enough and, you know, it's just too dim or it's too small, then um, you, know, you can buy yourself a, a tablet like a Kindle uh, and you can set the background for black and then the text white or vice versa, and you can adjust the size of the font. And um, so, you know, exposing yourself to these uh, newer technologies, you know, at this time, you know, you have, have time, hopefully some energy, you can always ask people for help, uh, either on the phone or by email to your family, friends. Yes, so that that's good. Let's see. I'm going to see if um, somebody has chatted here. Let's see. Okay, so we have one here. Um, my son wants to visit, but that makes me nervous. Yes, well, it all depends. If your son is working from home and everyone in you know your son's home is working from home or at home if they're not working then um then it's okay for your son to um i'm not sure about this you need to ask your own facility whether you can sit outside you know six feet apart and um and have a visit that way i know it's not okay to and they'll go inside of the assisted living at this time. Right, so how do we best protect our seniors who are not tech savvy, but want to stay in touch? Okay, so, um, and I'm going to assume that you mean that stay in touch with other people. So the telephone, 
is always there. It's been around for decades, and so you can always pick up your phone, your landline in your room, and call people. And um, sometimes the younger, younger generation uh, doesn't acknowledge phone calls. So if you're trying to reach like a great niece or nephew or a grandchild or, you know, a younger person, you may need to talk to their parent and urge them to look at their voicemails at this time, because often they don't do that. Um, but your own, you know, the next generation down, you know, the people that are, you know, 40 to, you know, 70, uh, they certainly um, look at their voicemails and see who is called and you can urge them to keep their ringer on now that they're not out in the office and needing to, um, you know, have their ringer off so that they hear your phone call. Let's see. So, um, knitting is a great hobby to do in bed. Yes, knitting or crocheting are wonderful hobbies and you can do them in bed or in your chair. Um, yes, and, um, and uh, someone says here, I can't help but stay in bed and my anxiety has spiked. And when I lie in bed, I'm always worried about getting the symptoms and I feel alone. Yes, well, you know, once again, if you're lying in bed more than you used to and you're feeling, you know, down and socially withdrawn, you know, that's a really good reason to obtain, you know, professional help right now. You now, the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, you know, has um, stated that uh, stress is actually responsible for 50% of, you know, depressions. In other words, you know, why now? Why depress now? 50% 50, 50 of the time it's stress, increased stress. And so, you know, I would recommend that you not lie in bed, you know, if you're not depressed and you can help it. I recommend, you know, not, not lying down in bed much and, and worrying and thinking and thinking. Um, you know, be, be active, do something, you know. Try your hardest, um, you know, to connect with people or to connect with yourself through, through writing, through journaling. Okay, um, now, something else these um, days um, to be strong is to you know, don't drink too much alcohol. You know, a lot of us are used to having, you know, glass two, three, whatever, of wine or, uh, you know, liquor, beers, um, many days a week. And, you know, once again, you know, we really don't want to be doing that right now. Um, there's other ways of, you know, relaxing. So, now, why don't we take a few minutes and practice one of those ways, okay? This is called the Golden Globe uh, Relaxation um, Visual Guided Imagery. So the Golden Globe. So you all can um, close your eyes with me, and um, we're just going to start by breathing in and breathing out. So you know, breathe in. And... Uh, Breathe out. So we're going to breathe in the golden substance. And we're going to breathe out our apprehensions, our frustrations. And you breathe in, you're going to breathe in through your nose. Going to pause and then breathe out those anxieties. Just breathe in and breathe out as I talk. You're going to be going at a different rhythm than me. You breathe in the sunshine. The count of two through your nose. Pause and then breathe out. When we breathe out, we're going to take longer than when we breathe in. 
So once again, we're going to breathe in that golden substance on the count of two. So that's one, two, pause, and then breathe out. Take longer to breathe out as we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. And we're going to breathe in the golden sunshine of the spring. Feel it down into your lungs. And to breathe out feelings of darkness as we count to four. And then pause. And breathe in the golden substance to your lungs, can feel it whirling around, protecting your lungs, protecting your heart. And you breathe out in the count of four, and then you pause. And when you breathe out, you breathe out like a fish. A fish, a mouth is puckering some. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth like a fish. You breathe in, golden substance. Pause, and breathe out your fear and your anger. To anger, anger makes us feel ill. Yes. And as we breathe in the golden substance, we can feel that warmth, you know, extending beyond our lungs and heart into our limbs and our torso and our toes. And as we breathe out, we breathe out more darkness and fear, anger. We breathe in. Breathe in through our nose and count of two, right? And then we feel that nice, protective, golden sunshine. And we breathe out. And this time, as we breathe in, the golden substance goes into our cells, starts coming out our pores and forming a protective layer around us. We breathe out the negative thoughts and feelings, the fear. You breathe in each time. You feel more and more protected as that layer around us thickens, becomes a golden glow. Yes. Okay. So that's an example of the guided imagery. You can also use your own place, special place to go to. You can just breathe comfortably, deep breaths, in and out. Always good to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But you can go to your place that you love, the, your, your magical places. Okay, we have here... Um, my father has Alzheimer's and every day is growing further away from his memories. I'm very fearful that when I am finally able to visit him, he will no longer remember me. Yes, and you know, if your father has Alzheimer's and if he actually doesn't visually remember you when you visit him, he's still going to remember you. He'll, he'll sense that he knows you and that you're a safe, loving person. He'll trust you and he'll talk with you. So you don't need to worry about that. Yes. Very hard times. Well, um, so, you know, once again, if you're feeling need for help, our practice is called Mind Path. You can um, you know, search for it with your computer or your phone and um, just you know, look at our website and such and different clinicians. Um, and the, the phone number is 877-876-7777. Uh,
3783. That's 877 876 3783. Wish you well. We'll be thinking about you. Mind Path Cares. Uh, let's see, I have one more here. Um, oh boy, how do you get parents to comply with social distancing? Um, dear, I guess they could um, watch the news and just become a little more informed. Um, they're feeling like, um, you know, they're not subject to the virus. And um, and there's political reasons, perhaps, why they're feeling like um, it's it's um, safe enough. So you know, not everybody shares the same worldview, um, like always. So I think if just some um, you know exposure to the news or to an article or two that you could send to them, that that would be that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you, folks. Sure. Better turn it off. Let's see here. End the stream.